Oh, there you are, YouTube. Do 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 subscribe. Okay, what are we doing today? Number seven. The Amityville Horror. Ooh, the original version. All right. Can you put it back? Good job. Cool. We're about to start Amityville Horror. I'm not sure if this is a first time watch for me or not. I know I watched the Ryan Reynolds version and I feel like I have vague, cloudy memories of watching this one, maybe when I was in college. I don't know, I should know more once it starts, but we're gonna get it going. Barfing nuns. Barfing nun. That's 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 my takeaway. That part in the movie, the barfing nun <laughs> had me cracking up. Uh, what I think stood out most in this movie was the use of sound. There are, I, I just felt it felt really important important <laughs> because I don't know. It was it was used a lot for jump scares. I feel like they were like omitting, I could be wrong, you know, just saw this movie, um, could be omitting like all diegetic sound except for one source. Cause I feel like there was this moment where we, where we were seeing a cat and this cat is doing this scary meow and that's all we're hearing. And I think everything else around that meow was silenced. And I think things like that were done in other areas as well. Like, um, I think Margot Kidder, when she was like doing some screams in the middle of the night, I think something like that happened. It just seemed very heavy on sound. It felt very like 70s as well with like some of the editing. Um, like when you think of like those grindhouse trailers and things like that, uh, the way they illuminate certain things. Um, I mean, that's more, you know, visuals, but uh, it did have a lot of, I guess a lot of editing visuals that, that made me think of uh, those like 70s grindhouse things. Like um, when the family, again, I'm talking to, about this movie like you've seen it. Uh, when the family first gets to the house and they're like checking it out, seeing if they want to buy the home, that whole sequence going room to room and these like flashbacks that were happening just felt like very 70s to me. Speaking of those flashbacks, the flashbacks were to like an original murder that happened in the home and it looked like they were done with a shotgun. <laughs> and this shotgun is going throughout the house from room to room to room, killing this family. How are these people not waking up from the shotgun shots? It makes no sense to me. Um, but I don't know. It's based on a true story. Must be how it happened. So, I don't know. What else? Uh, the sound just seemed very important to me. Um, Brolin, you know, he, he he watched his hair, you know, go from this, like, full mane, and then it kind of turns into this greasy-looking, I don't know, jerry curl, I guess. Um, and sort of when he's, like, going nuts... He, he looks a little funny sometimes, and I, I don't think he's supposed to, but you do laugh a little bit. You're kind of like, that looks a little funny right there. Um, let's see. It, it's very much like, if I had to compare it to other movies, I would compare it to The Shining. Very much like The Shining, except for it's like done in a house. I mean, it's very close to The Shining, actually. And uh, Poltergeist just the very end was really making me think of poltergeist when they're like you know what we've had enough of this place we're out of here and it's raining um uh, that that there's a lot of similarities there obviously uh, poltergeist came out after uh, but i don't know i still i still saw that happening um and i think it was great to end the movie on saving the dog like as somebody who when watching independence day was worried about that dog in that tunnel and just needing him to get to safety before he, you know, burnt to a crisp from that alien explosion. You know, 
I, as somebody who was very stressed about that as a kid, I really appreciate that this movie, it's like climax there at the end is all based on getting that dog out of the house. Like it's not the kids, it's not the wife, it's Brolin is out there facing Satan to save the family pet. And I just think that's really noble and good because, I mean, that's, it's like the, the director knew, who directed this movie? I, I didn't look. Um, it's like the director knew when it comes to people, humans, maybe Americans, maybe it's, maybe it's every, everybody, we want to see that dog saved. You know, we can see in films, mash castle <laughs> casualties, but if it's a, an animal, it's like, hey, you've gone too far. And they really relied on that for this movie, and I think it worked because that's when I was at the edge of my seat. Is Brolin going to get that dog? Is Satan going to get that dog? Brolin better get that dog. Get that dog, and he, he better be a good guy when he gets that dog because w we've been seeing he he's, could be a bad guy. What if he slaughters that dog? So we're thinking all sorts of different things. Is he going to get that dog out of the house? And he does. He does. You don't have to worry. Spoilers. He gets the dog. The dog is safe. They hightail it out of there, just like they do in Poltergeist. And they never return. So everything ends up all, all right and fine. Um, yeah. I'll, although I feel really bad for the priest. What happened to him? Um, like, I don't know. He becomes like this laughing stock in the church. And it's like, hey, other priests, why don't you believe in this stuff? Um, I don't know. That part was very disappointing. You got this priest who's like, hey, Satan lives in the basement of this home, right? And the other ones are like, yeah, right, get out of here with your secular education. He's like, what? No, I'm a priest. What are you talking about? And they're like, well, we didn't go to college like you did. And we think you think you're better than us. And he's like, what are you talking about? No, I'm just trying to help a family in my parish, man. And, uh, you know, uh, Amity Island is over here just trying to say, tough luck. We're not going to look into it. We're not even going to investigate it. We're just going to... It's weird because they're making fun of him for being secular, yet they are acting extremely secular in the fact that they just completely dismiss everything he says. But, yeah. Okay. Barfing nun. <coughs> just that part right there. Let's, let's end on barfing nun. <coughs> And, um, yeah, otherwise, I, oh, I was going to say, I don't, I don't know if I've seen this. Parts of it seem so familiar, but I wonder if I saw the trailer and if I've just seen images and I'm blending them with the Ryan Reynolds movie, because I have seen the Ryan Reynolds one. But this one, it was like, no, nah, I don't think I've seen it. And then I'd be like, well, I don't know, that looks very familiar. Maybe I've seen it. No, I don't think I've seen it. Well, I don't know, that looks very familiar. Maybe I've seen it. So I don't know where I'm at. I'm going to say this was a first time viewing and I'm guessing I've just seen promotional imagery. Maybe I've watched the trailer or something and I'm just sort of like blending it with everything that I remember from the Ryan Reynolds movie. So I think that's where I'm at. And I think this was a first time watch for me. I'm going to go ahead and say it was. Um, and now on that note, actually let's end with Barfing Nun. <laughs> and perhaps I'll see you tomorrow for more Peer Hangout.